Hi guys, Gamekeeper John here, and today we've got a video on how to aim a catapult. Loads of different styles here to try today, and to show you exactly how to tune it in, and how to get pinpoint accuracy to get people into little groupings. Like I said, this is a very detailed video, we're going to go into anchor points, reference points, pouch release, recoil, um, you know, stance, there's loads and loads of different little things and little tweaks which all help into getting pinpoint accuracy, consistency and the repetitive shot where you keep putting the same shot in the same style in the same place as I shot before. Consistency is the key and hopefully today we're going to go through loads and loads of different things like I say, anchor points, reference points, your stance, um, you know, how you grip the frame, how you hold and release the pouch. Every one of these little things adds up to accuracy. If you can master every single one, which will take a lot of time and a lot of practice, once you've mastered them, the rewards will be great. And you'll soon be putting seven shots on a penny in no time. So without further ado, we'll start it off. We'll start the um, talk off on instinctive shooting. This isn't really aiming, but we will cover it. This is basically, we hold the frame like so. And instead of literally lining it up and actually finding a reference point on the fork, you sort of let your brain do the calculations you sort of, you know, you let go when you feel it's right. That's instinctive, intuitive. So we just get that out of the way. There's no reference point, there's no anchor point. Well, it's just, you know, when you think it's pointing roughly in the right way, let it go. Well, this isn't what the video is about. It's about aiming and um, sizing up catapults, but I just thought I'd clear the instinctive one off. Okay then, so now we're gonna talk about reference points and anchor points. These are the two main components for getting consistency in a shot and accuracy. We've got a couple of catapults here I'll just show you. A reference point is the point on the catapult, whether it be the fork tip, a mark on the bands, an aiming dimp, or any type of sighting method, that is your reference point. So when you draw back, you'll be wanting to put your reference point bang on the target. So if my reference point was the corner of that fork, that's what I'd want on my bullseye. We'll show you some shooting after, and we'll show you if you're shooting to the left, how to bring it into the right, if you're shooting eye, how to bring it down, and so on. Like I said, it's going to be a detailed video, and it's going to be a long video, but there's no way of putting this much detail into an aiming video unless it takes that long, so just bear with me and get through it all as quick as I can. So that is your reference point. Point on the fork. It's important to have a reference point if you're aiming. Your anchor point where your pouch goes. My anchor point, my thumbnail there, goes into the core of my mouth. So every time I draw back, like so, the corner of my mouth there is where the pouch goes. And every single time, exactly the same. Straight back there, and that is it. Knuckles up, and I've got my reference point, which is the middle dimp, the bands, can you see my aiming dimp? That is your reference and aiming point. Now, how you find your reference point and um, your anchor point, I'll show you that a bit further on in the video because it's not something you can just think, oh, I'll copy Gamekeeper John, I'll draw my pouch to there and I'll use the middle of the fork and I'll hit the bullseye. Might not work for you, it depends how you twist your head, how you hold your frame, there's loads of little things. Like I said, that'll come near the end of the video. Well, first off, that is your reference and anchor. They are the main things to remember. Like archery, if you get your two points the same, in theory, if this is the same and that's the same every shot, it will fly the same. So let's talk pouch hold and um, release of the pouch. As you can see, if I draw back, I always keep my knuckles up, like so, and see so the pouch runs flat. Don't have it like that. I don't have it like that because it must, everything must be the same every single shot. It's no good pulling it back one time having the pouch down, pulling it back the other time and having the pouch up, because basically it'll just pivot the shot up or pivot the shot down, and over 10 meters on a piece of paper, just a stupid little thing, like not having that pouch, just tweaked a little like that, will put your ball out six or eight inch over 10 meter. So it is important. Everything will come down to the same thing, consistency and repetitiveness. You've got to keep doing the same thing. So anchor, anchor point, reference point, pouch. Something you, if you want to do tight grouping on targets and compete at the top level, you've got to do it. 
It's just a matter of drilling it into people the same. Reference, anchor, get the straight release. It comes natural with practice, it seems a bit confusing, but after time you just pick the cast bolt up and you'll be like, yeah, got it. Took me ages to learn. I've you know, I've entered some tournaments in my time, I've won tournaments at the highest level over here in the UK. I've took more game than probably most people, so you know, I know what I'm talking about with this stuff. And there's other sort sorts of stuff, the way you grip the pouch, that can change, because some people like to, there's no right or wrong way. Some people, I haven't actually got a ball in there to show you, but some people hold the ball like that. Me personally, I hold the pouch with a ball behind it in my hand, but there's no right or wrong way. It's what suits you and it's just keeping whatever way you choose and what works for you, it's just keeping it the same every shot. That is the main thing, consistency. So you got your grip, you gotta find your grip, you gotta find your reference point, anchor point and keep it straight. Another thing which I take really serious when target shooting mainly this is, is the stance. I like to stand exactly sideways on, feet about shoulder width apart, and that is the stance I take every time, exactly sideways onto the target. As you can see, reference, anchor, straight pouch. Reference, anchor, straight pouch. And some people might stand that way, some people might stand you know, with the back to it a bit and turn like that, I've seen people do that. There is no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong with your anchor point. Because I've seen people who draw, I've actually seen people who draw to the middle of the head there. I've actually seen people who use those two fingers as the pouch, like that. And to get the same anchor point, they actually shove a finger in the rear. And it gives them the same repetitiveness every time. Da -da -da. There's some people who draw to the right line. But for me, the corner of the mouth works, and you've got to find which one works for you. And I'll show you exactly how to do that near the end of the video when we go into some proper detail about finding your anchor point, finding your um, reference point, and tuning it in so you can get your grouping in. And again, another thing we'll just briefly talk about, but we're not going to go into this in detail, is recoil. I prefer an heavier frame like the metal one. Recoil is when you let go. Just a little bit of a flip, it's not necessarily a force flip, it's just the way the catapult naturally reacts. So whenever your frame will give you less recoil because it soaks it up. That's why I prefer one, but that is really getting technical. And unless you're getting decent grouping anyway, I wouldn't worry too much about recoil. Um, on target bands as well, you won't get it as much. If you're shooting heavy double bands on a light wooden catapult, then you will find you're getting a lot of recoil. And when you let go, it'll go like that and give you a lot of recoil. But like I say, won't worry too much at this point about sorting your recoil So out. now we're going to show you how to tune in to find your reference point. First of all, try and find yourself an anchor point. As I say, we're just tuning in at the moment. So for example, I'm going to do this totally wrong. We've got black dot on the screen. I'm going to pull back to an anchor point, corner of the mouth, and I'm going to use the... When you're looking at that there, I'm going to use this corner as the, bull, as the reference point and put it on the bullseye and see what happens. to the right a bit, we'll do another one with that reference point on the bullseye. Try another one, as you can see they're pretty much identical, the same place. Try one more. My shots there are coming across, so I know straight away I need to go up and left to get myself on the bullseye. So when you're looking at the frame there, and you're using that reference point and it's putting the shots down there you know that you need to go up a little bit and across sort of where the dimp is so it's that it is that easy you stick to your reference point they're going there so it's common sense but it's easier explained I'll just show you again there is where I've been putting it on that corner and it's been dropping down there so now we need to go up and across, and we'll give again. I'm on the money, I reckon. Just a little tune like that. Stick to the same anchor point. Draw back. And instead of using that, I'm going to go up and across to the centre. We're still a little bit low, but we're in line, so we're going to try that a little bit more. Across, down. Actually, for the same hole there. So we've come. We've come across now. 
we're in line with it, I'll just grab my pen to show you. Now we've sort of found out where we need to be. At first we were sort of down that area, now we've just put two for there, so we bob on the money. We got that bit right. Purposely now, I'm going to go up too much with a fork and I reckon we should land one somewhere around the top of the line. We'll, we'll overemphasise it and go up. And to do that, again, we know now we've got our anchor point, corner of the mouth. We use the corner of the fork at, at first for the um, reference point. It was to the right, so we've moved over to the dimp. The dimp's put us bang on the money, long ways. So now, when we got that, on the target, we was aiming just below like that. Now we're going to push the frame up a little bit so it just about puts it in the dimp. We'll go a little bit higher actually. Here we go. Again, pretty much in line, but a bit too high. Try one more like that and overemphasize the height. Again, there. Just grab my pen again, them two, in the line, one there, one there. So we got the line right, we put the first one's too low and the first one's too high. You know what's coming don't you, it's a rocket science. So now instead of going too high, we're going to drop it down so the mark's pretty much bang on now. And I reckon within a few minutes we've tuned this in, we should be getting pretty much where the bullseye is. Right by it. Try another one. And boom, we got one. Right there, look. See it? Bang on, on the money. And that is how you tune one of these in. Now we're going to pick a totally different frame now from random. We're using over the top frame. We'll do it again. What I'll do is I'll just change the paper we're good for this whole process again, then we can start talking about some more of the detailed stuff. But next time we do it with the over the top one. Okay then, fresh piece of paper, different catapult, different band method, totally different style. So for example, you've got an over the top catapult and you want to shoot it with the forks up. What most people tend to do, if you're sighting like that, is draw to your eye line. And it's a rule of thumb really, most of the time, on 99% of the people, if you're shooting over the top and using one of your forks as the method, as the um, reference. When you draw back, you, your pouch really needs to go in between your eye and your nose, that's what works. If you're shooting TTF and sighting up, it's really between your mouth and your nose. So, you know, sort of there for gangs to shoot in sideways. Over the top, it's sort of there. Don't know why, but that's just what works, and that's how it works for 99% of the people. So, fresh paper, new style. We're going to shoot this one over the top, draw in to the sort of the corner of my eye. Always wear safety glasses as well when you shoot anywhere, I should really have them on. But I haven't just for this video because I'm only close range. Um, but I'm going to draw and I'm going to use the inside of that fork. See that corner there? So I'm going to try that as my reference point. I've no idea where it's going to go. And we're going to see what happens. So, draw to my anchor point by my eye. Put that corner of the thing on the bolt, and we're over here somewhere. I'll try one more like that. I already know I've got to get move across to get my grouping sorted, but we'll try one more. Putting that on the bullseye, and we should get a ball roughly in the same area. <laughs> and there you go. So now that tells me. There, putting that on the bullseye, he's pushing um, the shots over, so I need, no sorry, that one, <laughs> what am I on about, I've put that one on and my shots are going out, so I really need to come over that way. So I'm going to try the inside of this fork, and I know pretty much straight away that that should, fingers crossed because he's on video, put me somewhere near the bull. Or, if not, I'll know what I've got to do to get it there. So, we'll try the inside of that fork. Where that one went. Straight away, you're on the money, you know what I mean. And again, inside of that fork. 
we're on the money. And that's good enough. But then we'll get back to the inside of that fork. I know it's going to miss, but it's just to show you all how easy it is to switch from left to right. And I know it's a long video, I know I'm babbling on, but there's it's got to be drilled in, there's a lot to get through. And we've still got to get through pouch release and um, stance and all that again and sort it all out. But here we go, we're going to use that fork now. We know it's going to push the shots over. And there you go. And that is exactly, exactly what using a reference point, a reference point and an anchor point does. There is one lot of grouping. There is the other lot of grouping. It's, you know, if you were just pointing the shooting or doing something, that would be well, but that's how you get your grouping. Even though that is nowhere near the target, that's actually good grouping. You know what I mean? You just, same, boom, boom. And it's, it's, it's as simple as that. So now let's switch this catapult up. Uh, ignore the ones that are there. Actually, we'll draw another roll. Another target there. Like I say, totally ignore them now. We're going to shoot this. Gangster. Like that. And right there's our first point. We're going to use... What should we use? We'll use the bottom inside fork. There. Shooting gangster. That went over about there. Let's quickly chuck a piece of paper on to show you. Sorry about this. Ill prepared. So again, gangster, we're going to use the bottom inside piece of that. I know it's sending it high, but we'll show you how easy it is to get it down. We're up here. Draw that on for you. Do one more like that. And again, the grouping is perfect because I'm using the same reference point on the fork, even though it's rung. M2 shots there. And that was using the bottom fork. So again, it's not hard, is it? It's common sense. Bring your fork down, try the corner of that fork, or the corner of that fork is your reference. I'm going to try the top corner of the fork. Now I know that's going to put me pretty much bang on the money again. There we have it. One more. Top of the fork. Same old again. And exactly look at the grouping. One lot of grouping, which was wrong, we moved it in on the bullseye. First lot of grouping, we found a reference point, one the right one, we changed it, we're on the bullseye. It is so, so easy once you know, but the thing is, keep practicing it, keep going through it, and you know, it's 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 a ball ache, is <laughs> one way to put it. A lot of practice, a lot of time, a lot of dedication. Don't shoot at solid targets if you're tuning in, because you wouldn't know where you was missing. But we've gone from there to on that one, from there to on that one. Just shows you how to tune three separate catapults, well, two catapults, my normal one, we tuned it in, we were shooting this over the top of the eye line, then we tuned it in, then we shot this gangster, we switched um, reference points from high down to the cheek, we switched fork things. It's, you know, it's so, so easy if you know how. And watch this video a few times, practice it a few times, and I guarantee you can tune in and start getting it in and around the stuff. Put, put your shots on the money, it won't be long before you, you put in seven shots in a row on a penny. So. Just to recap, I've actually got a couple of notes here of things which, because um, obviously I couldn't remember all the stuff in the video, I had to make some notes myself. But if you're going to get a pen and paper, these are the things when you're shooting, put it by your catch box where you shoot from, and just write it down. We've got reference points, which is the bit on the fork. We've showed you how to switch them. That is your reference, this bit here. Very important if you want to aim. Something you must remember, it'll come naturally with time. Anchor point, where you bring your pouch. Like I say, there's no right or wrong. Some people have it by the chin, the eye, the mouth, the nose. Once you put a piece of paper up and you take a few shots, you will know 
where it is, but I like to, like I said in, in the previous clip, I like to come to the corner of my mouth for sight shooting and then work the catapult into the position and remember where it works. If I'm shooting over the top like that, I like to come to my eye and then keep the anchor point the same and let the fork do the work. Some people put a piece, put the reference point on and start moving the anchor point, but you can't physically see the anchor point. I like to keep that in a set position and then you've got a sight on the catapult. Much easier, much better, and then your anchor point just comes naturally every time. That's, that would be my um, recommendation anyway. Don't move your anchor point once you've found it. Stick to it. I've had the same anchor point for about three years now, and I wouldn't change it for anything. Release on the pouch. Very important, like I showed you. So you draw, reference, anchor. And this pouch will come very close to the camera now. You don't want it bending like that. You don't want it bending like that. You want it running flush. Like so. No tweaking that way, no tweaking that way, no twisting it a little bit. You want to pull it back and you want it nice and straight. The straighter the better. Every shot. Reference, anchor, release. Can't how hard is that to remember once you've tuned in on your piece of paper. Reference, anchor, release. You get it. it. Pouch grip. Nobody can tell you what's right or wrong. Like I said, let's get a ball and show you. I like to put my ball in. Yeah, yeah, easy. <laughs> and pinch it. So it's like that. I'm not actually holding the ball, I'm holding the pouch in front. Some people like to get two fingers. Just get a ball, a little pinch like that. Just the ball. There's no right or wrong. You experiment. Find out what works for you. Like I said, me personally, I like to hold the pouch. Some people like to pinch the ball, that's how it gives a better release. Only you can decide that. Bit of practice on each one. Five minutes on each release, you'll soon work out what suits you. Next one is the recoil. We won't go on to the recoil because that's inappropriate really. That's just on every frame. That's, I'd say in every frame would in theory be more accurate because there's less recoil. But loads of people would argue that and there's no right or wrong anyway. It's just little opinion I have, the heavier the frame it sort of soaks up the bands going back and there's less movement, less movement on the hand means the reference point would be in the same position for longer it wouldn't flip in, and that's just my opinion. Stance, there's no right or wrong in stance, like I say, shoulder width for part with my legs, just keep it thing, keep your catapult straight, you don't want to do that or that, if you're shooting over the top, keep it nice and straight to your eye line. And the main thing is consistency. Everything you've learned, references, anchors, um, you know, pouch release, stance, however you do it, the more consistent you are, the better it will be. The more you practice them, the more consistent you'll be of them. Put the time in. I've showed you how to tune three catapults in from picking up and shooting off the target to bring you straight on it. Put the time in, put the practice in. Most of all, enjoy your shooting and stay safe. I uh, really hope this video has helped because, as I say, there's a couple of videos I've seen on YouTube of people aiming, but they're just they're simple. They're just saying, oh, look down the bands or practice this. There's nothing as detailed as what I've got into. And if you really want me to go into more detail, I can do separate videos on every one. I can do a pouch release in one separate video showing all the different ways. I can do all reference points in one videos, and I might just do that. So you've got your separate little bits. If something you're stuck on, you can go back to. But for now, we've well sort of detailedly covered the majority of the things, and that's how you shoot. And don't forget the instinctive, without no reference or aiming points or anything. The ones who just let the brain do the calculations, and just literally, hey, nothing wrong with that. Some good shooters like that. But all the tournaments I've seen in over the pond in other countries and our countries, the top top shooters, the ones who are always in the finals and the top three, use reference pouch anchor and all that so you know it speaks for itself doesn't it i hope you like it stay safe subscribe write us plenty more videos coming soon all the best